today guys I'm going to be looking at Tudor jewellery which is a passion of mine as well it relates to my paintings as you'll see now in order to paint my Tudor paintings I need items like these Lovely, ain't that? Pearls, jewellery, especially Tudor jewellery or anything that looks like Tudor jewellery. I've been trying to get this vlog together, guys, for a good couple of days now. There's been a few things happening that interrupt me or put me off my stride when I'm trying to do this vlog. But what it basically is, is that I'm trying to uh, start up again my Tudor paintings that I left off, uh, I think it was last summer, I left them off. And if you go a few vlogs back, you'll probably see the paintings I'm talking about. But the main one is Richard III. I want to get that started again. So this vlog is basically about me restarting Richard III's painting, getting some uh, detailed uh, paintwork in it, especially the jewellery, the Tudor jewellery, which I'm trying to get over to you uh, in this vlog that I need a real specimen Tudor jewellery to relate and to paint, if you know what I mean, uh, in real life. Real life, John. <laughs> I can't get my words out of it. <laughs> These are a must if you are going to be painting Tudor paintings. This is the jewellery I got specially made guys for my Mary Queen of Scots painting as you can see it's painted in here I need things like these pearls guys, as you can see how the light catches them, to paint them. Uh, I could do it from photograph, but I, I prefer to do it from actual real life. And you can see the points of light that hit the pearls, depending on where the light's coming from. So it gives me a great idea in how to paint the pearls or any jewellery that I need for my paintings so to put it in shorter terms i am drawing jewelry from real life that's the way i prefer <laughs> it's the easiest one for me instead of from a picture i got it out finally <laughs> oh and the, the reason my mind's all, all mixed up is because i had a bit of a crisis the other day remember the the meter you seen me in a couple of vlogs back up in the ladder putting my credit into my meter well I went to get credit in it yesterday morning and the key didn't work I went to my local uh, co-op shop they said it wasn't working I went to my post office they said it wasn't working so they gave me it took me about an hour to phone up I had to sit on the phone for about 40 minutes on the emergency number because I had no, no electricity and in this crisis uh, you can't go wandering about looking for electricity so I had to phone up the emergency number the electrical med emergency number and <laughs> you can see I'm still flustered and uh, asked them what I could do so what they did was they gave me a pin number to go and pick up a new key and it was uh, left at my local co-op shop so I want to thank the guy for the electric shop who helped me out there uh, he, if it wasn't for him, I'd be with the electricity at the moment, so as you can see, and with me having PTSD, I can't, I can't be uh, sitting about stressing about different things, you know what I mean? I've got uh, with the post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, that's the least thing I need is more stress on top of this uh, current situation, so that's all sorted. So I'm back to my vlog and I'm getting this painting 
uh, restarted. <laughs> I hope that this makes sense, sense to you. <laughs> it's one of those vlogs that you just cannot get doing and you can't get finished. <laughs> Hopefully I'm all now. And the emergency is over. Next. This is the old key, guys, that uh, had went faulty. And this is the new one they gave me. Brand new key. So thank God that problem's resolved and fixed. I don't need to worry about electricity now. <laughs> New key. All fixed. This is another Tudor painting, guys, that I'm doing of Elizabeth the First. And as you can see, when I move up close for you, just a minute, once I explain this, because she's up high, I've done all the outline of the jewellery and I've just got the detail of the jewellery to put in, as you'll see. But this one's going to be done after Richard III. As you can see, the underpainting of the jewellery has been done. I've just got the details to put on it. She's up high. <laughs> Another thing I forgot, as you can see, they're all different shapes and sizes. These are, I think there's a set of three, three necklaces here that I bought from the charity shops. As you can see, this is a kind of natural looking pearls. So this one would come in handy. Exceptionally good for my Tudor pins. These are round pearls and smaller pearl pearls that I need, like seed pearls. So as you can see, I've got a good lot here to choose from. Mary Queen of Scots, as a lot of you all know, and Elizabeth I, loved their jewellery and their costumes. So I have been researching in my books, my novel books on Queen Elizabeth the First, Richard the Third, and Mary Queen of Scots. Well, there's nothing better for me than to read uh, my research into the books I have on Richard the Third, Mary Queen of Scots, and Queen Elizabeth. That's where I get a lot of my tips and my reference uh, material from, and I get the pleasure of reading the material. <laughs> Henry VIII, I've still got details of his jewellery to put in. I've got the gold to do, as you can see, which will not take long. It's just getting round to doing it. Now, with this lockdown, I have had exceptional, as with others, exceptionally uh, extra time on my hands uh, in the home, so I've took this opportunity to continue painting my Richard III Tudor painting. Next! Now, Richard III, like any other nobleman of his time, loved to wear hat brooches. I haven't got any hat brooches either made or bought, so I'm going to refer to reference photos on the internet of Richard III, probably and other noblemen. It's the easiest, easiest way for me to do it at the moment, so. This is the reference photos I have chosen, and 
this is the kind of brooch I want to paint onto my painting. Now, obviously, there is no photographs of Richard III for me to refer to, so what I did, I referred to this sculpture. Right, guys, this is the painting of Richard III I'm doing, and this is where I've got up to so far. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to sketch the outline of the brooch to start with, and it's not going to be a tracing or whatever, it's just going to be a hand sketched, rough sketch, and as you can see, it's uh, it's not exactly tidy, but it does for me, and I'll tidy up as I go along. I love to paint this way uh, without any... Uh, tracing or whatever, you know what I mean? It's uh, I love to just do it off off by my hand. Yeah, I just love to freehand it, guys. I don't uh, prefer the tracing. It's uh, it's too straight a lines. You know what I mean? It's just it looks uh, fake to me. So I'm going to do this by hand. Remember, years and years back in the Tudor times, these brooches would have been handmade and they wouldn't have been uh, straight lines or whatever and uh, perfectly round circles and perfectly round gems so that's the style that I'm going for so that it does look handmade, a handmade brooch and as you can see guys I'm using the impasto style of painting so it's nice and thick I like to have a kind of 3D effect with impasto and it, mo it makes it more look like jewels than a flat a flat painting well the flat if you just do it flat no i mean 2d flat painting style this is where me buying those pearls and other gems and necklaces comes into its own because then i can see where the light hits the pearls or the gems and i know exactly how to paint it onto this painting as you can see, I decided to put blue velvet curtains in the background. I think it just sets it off nice. Now as you can see, I did the emeralds and there are a ruby, a rectangular ruby stone in the middle there. But with this being an impasto style painting, those, those uh, emeralds and the ruby are going to take a long time to dry because it's that thicker paint so I'm going to leave this brooch just now and go into another part of the painting but guys between the emeralds I'm going to put some I think I'm going to do some seed pearls painted in there but once that's dry I don't want to uh, corrupt the painted brooch with the wet paint, so I'm going to let this dry first so I'll need to come back another day and let you see the finished brooch painting but what I'm going to do is see his clothes, his, his tunic you see his gold well I want to highlight these uh, because in real life these would have been made of gold thread so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some real gold uh, I've got sheets of gold 22 karat gold and I'm going to add flakes of that to highlight the tunic on Richard's blouse there uh, his top so uh, we'll do that uh, next and give that brooch time to dry but as you can see it's coming along great and what I'm going to be doing as well I'm going to be highlighting uh, flecks of his hair just to highlight it uh, but it seems to be coming along quite good as you would probably uh, agree yourselves right guys this is the sheets of gold uh, flakes that I'm going to be using it's a uh, 22 karat gold f sheets of flake and 
well, as I said, this is what's going to go into highlight his blouse. I think I'll use that top one there because I can see I've been using bits and pieces of that. So we'll use that piece first. This is very, very precarious to use this, guys. You can see it's blown away there. It's very, very thin, so you've got to be really careful with it. I've brought the painting bin. See what I mean about it blowing? I brought Richard Ben. <laughs> Put him next to there. The gold leaf is uh, laying on top of a book I've got, look. Of Henry. Henry VIII. How appropriate, eh? Oh, see what I mean? It's sticking to my thumb there. Don't want a gold thumb. What I'm going to be doing, guys, I've got yellow ochre uh, paint here, and I've got my miniature brush for paint my miniatures. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put flecks of yellow ochre paint on the highlights I want and stick the gold to that instead of using uh, the, the, the gold glue I want to use the yellow ochre paint so that uh, the paint shows through a touch uh, on the outsides of the gold flake that's me started it guys I'm gonna do one or two pieces at a time, so I don't want to, to uh, miss where I'm, I'm painting. Just dab it on there. And then that dry brush, you just flick it off. It should leave specks of gold like that. As you can see it's coming along and the flecks are highlighting his shirt as I planned. It'll just catch the light now and again. As you know all paintings have got different variations of light during the day so at night time this might sparkle more than during the day etc. It's just going to highlight his shirt. I've still got a few bits to do like, but this is just to show you guys what you can achieve. Uh, just think, I'll probably, in his brooch as well, I'll probably add some specks of uh, gold leaf as well, just to get that bit of sparkle.
gonna probably give it a break here just now guys because I want to have something to eat for my lunch and we'll get back to this painting probably another day but I hope you enjoyed seeing me restarting this painting and getting the jewellery and the finery done on it I've enjoyed it today <laughs> especially when we've got plenty of time on our hands but these are going to sparkle up and once these dry in really uh, they'll be quickly dried like tomorrow morning this should be dry I'll brush off the excess gold and it should be a lot neater as well but it's coming along anyway lunchtime So have you seen guys, I still haven't finished that painting but I've done a good bit of it and I hope you enjoyed uh, having a look at me doing my paintings of, of the, the Tudor period, <laughs> Richard III.